Okay, so the last thing we want to talk about in our um, initial differentiation topic here is this idea of differentiability. So this is bringing together the idea of derivative with some of the ideas around continuity that we talked about right back at the start of the chapter. So a function is differentiable. So when we say something is differentiable, that means that its derivative can be found or its gradient is defined. So the function has a defined gradient at that particular point. So it's differentiable at a point if two conditions are met. And the first of which is that the function has to be continuous at that point. So we talked about continuity um, right back towards the start of the topic. So continuity being that the limit as x approaches a from below of a function is equal to the limit as x approaches a from above of the function. So that is that the limit as x approaches a exists and that um, that limit is equal to f of a. So the function also actually exists at a. Um, remember informally we can draw a line um, through the point without having to lift our pen. The second condition, so that's, it has to be continuous in order to be differentiable. The second condition is that we need to be able to draw a non-vertical tangent at that point. And, def, and informally that is that the graph is actually going to be smooth at that point. So what we need to understand is that we can't draw a tangent at a cusp or at an end point. So for example, a cusp is where we get a sharp corner. So where you might have a piecewise function where two different graphs are meeting at the one point, but they meet um, with a sharp corner rather than with a smooth gradient. So for example, here, this would be an example of a cusp. Okay, sorry. You've got two functions, they meet at this point. So condition one would be met here. Okay, the limit as x approaches zero from above is the same as the limit as x approaches zero from below and f of zero is defined, goes through that point. So part one is, it's continuous at that point, but it's not smooth at that point. So it has to be continuous and smooth, okay? It's not smooth at that point and that's because the gradients as we come from those two different directions are different and they're meeting, they're clashing at that point. So we don't have smooth gradient. We've got two clashing gradients or a sharp corner at that point. Okay. The same logic applies if we had an endpoint. So let's say this was an endpoint. The graph was actually stopping here. In fact, the graph the graph isn't continuous at the endpoint because the limit as x approaches a from below, we can't know what the limit as x approaches a from above is. Okay. So actually endpoints we actually fail the continuity test and so therefore automatically if it's not continuous at that point it's not differentiable at that point. Um, we also um, usually I would say continuous and smooth but actually more precisely than that and I'm not sure if there's an example that's going to show that here is if we have we need to have a non-vertical tangent so there is a kind of graph which is a sideways cubic graph that does this where at this point the tangent is actually a vertical line. Okay, and we know that gradient is undefined for a vertical line. And so therefore at that point where the tangent is vertical, the gradient is not defined. Okay, so it would not be differentiable at that particular x value. So we're looking for, for points of, um, we're looking for discontinuities. If the graph's discontinuous, it definitely isn't differentiable. Um, and then we're also looking for points where the graph is not smooth, essentially. Okay, so example one, give the set of um, values of x for which the following graphs are differentiable. Okay, so um, part A, the graph is continuous everywhere, but we've got this non-smooth point here when x equals zero. So it's not going to be differentiable at that point. So it is, give the set of values of x for which the graphs, graph is differentiable. So it will be differentiable for all real numbers except for when x equals zero. Okay, part B, um, it's definitely continuous everywhere from negative infinity up to, but not including four. Remember, it's not continuous at four because we don't know about the limit as we come from the right-hand side. Okay, so it's continuous everywhere um, from negative infinity up to four, not including four. But within that, we've again got this sharp cusp where it's not going to be differentiable at that point. So it's continuous over this range of values but we're going to need to exclude one, which is a cusp point. So where the graph is not smooth, so the gradient won't be defined at this point, the gradient won't be defined at the end point, and the gradient certainly isn't defined beyond there because the graph doesn't exist. Okay, part C, where is it differentiable? Okay, so 
it's continuous everywhere, everywhere, continuous everywhere up to one, not continuous at one. Um, it's it's also, and then it's discontinuous between one and two. It's also discontinuous, not continuous at two, because that's an endpoint. And again, we don't know about the left-hand limit. Okay, so in fact, differentiability and continuity is the same set of values here. So it's both continuous and differentiable, where x goes from negative infinity up to one. Union. So remember, it's not intersection. There's actually no intersection between these sets. Union. So or where x is from 2 up to infinity, not at 2. Okay, so you notice it doesn't matter that that's an included endpoint and that's a not included endpoint. The graph's not continuous at the endpoint regardless of whether it's included or not. Okay, it fails continuity for two reasons here. The limit as we approach from the left is defined, but we can't know that it's equal to the limit as we approach from the right and the function's not actually defined. Here, the function's defined and the limit as we approach from the right is defined, but we can't know what's happening with the limit as we approach from the left. So not continuous. Um, so it's continuous over the values I've just listed here. It's also differentiable over all those values. There's no sharp corners or points of um, vertical gradient. Okay, example two, consider the piecewise function, sketch the graph, and then we want to state where it's discontinuous, differentiable, etc. Okay. So essentially a piece by sketching a piecewise function is just sketching three separate functions. So we've got the line y equals x when x is less than or equal to sorry, y equals negative x. So that's a that's that, but only where x is less than or equal to negative one. So we're actually only going to be looking at it from there. Okay. We've got the parabola, y equals x squared, but only between negative one and zero, so only a bit of it. Okay, and then we've got a straight line, uh, y equals 3x plus 1, but only where x is bigger than or equal to 0. So it clearly starts at 1 and then has a gradient, or, or gradient, sorry, of negative 3. So it goes down. Okay, so essentially we have got Okay, so uh, the first branch is y equals negative x up to negative 1, and that's an included point, but that actually is going to meet with the parabola at this point. I'll try that again. Um, technically not included point here with the parabola. Okay, that point's included. It's not included on the parabola, it is included on the line. It doesn't matter, the point's included on the function. That's a key point though. It's a sort of cusp, it's where the two curves join. It's an M point, although it's not because they join. Um, when X is negative one, Y is positive one. All right, we have zero, zero here. And then the last branch of the function, so actually I'm just gonna write that over there, um, clearly has a Y intercept at one. Okay, it's got a gradient of negative three. So that should be one third zero. Okay, so that's my function. Okay, state the values of x at which there is a discontinuity. Okay, so remember discontinuity is where we need to lift our pen. So we can draw along the graph, we can draw through here without needing to lift the pen, there's no problem. But here at zero, we need to lift our pen to rejoin up here and then continue along the graph. So there is a discontinuity when x equals zero so therefore the graph certainly won't be differentiable when x equals zero. Um, but then there's also somewhere else where it won't be differentiable and that's here at this point where we've got two graphs meeting with different gradients. So we've got a cusp, okay? So therefore the graph is differentiable for all the real numbers except for negative one where there's a cusp and zero where the graph is discontinuous. Sketch the graph of y equals f dash x on the axes in part a and state its equation. Okay, so let's think about what's happening here. So now I might not have drawn suitably scaled axes to draw the derivative function. Let's just add in some bits if we can. Okay, so for the first branch of the function, the gradient is negative one. It's got constant gradient of negative one. Okay. So it's going to be that. Let me just draw that for now. We'll draw the endpoints in a bit. Then we've got the parabola. Now the derivative of the parabola is um, 2x. 
So when x equals negative 1, here, I can do this, but you can't with yours. I'm going to make it smaller so that I can add in some scale down the bottom. Oh, sorry. Okay. So the derivative will be um, 2x, which means when x equals negative 1, the gradient will be negative 2. So it's going to go from down here. And then it's going to go, when x equals 0, the gradient will be 0. So it's going to go up to there. And then in the third part of the function, now let me just continue my original function down, uh, the gradient is clearly negative 3, oh, which is way off my scale. <laughs> let me make it smaller again. Sorry, I didn't plan for the derivative function when I drew my original graph. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, so drawing in now, so it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So continuing my original graph down. Um, and then gradient is clearly negative 3 when x is bigger than 0. So that. Now, let's think about endpoints. We've just decided that the graph is not differentiable when x equals negative 1. So that means both of these endpoints at x equals negative 1 should be hollow, not included. The gradient doesn't exist here, so the derivative function doesn't exist here. Same with when x equals 0. Gradient is not defined when x equals 0, so we should have hollow circles on both of those endpoints. Okay. So in terms of um, stating the equation of the derivative function, it's going to have three branches to it. Okay, Derivative of negative x is negative 1. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of negative 3x plus 1 is negative 3. But thinking about the domains, you, they're not going to be just the same as the original. So it'll just be when x is less than negative 1, not less than or equal to, because it's not differentiable at negative 1. It'll be between negative 1 and 0 here. Again, not included. But it'll be when x is bigger than 0. Okay, not bigger than or equal to zero um, because the gradient is not defined at zero. So your gradient function shouldn't be defined at zero. So it shouldn't in the domain of the gradient function shouldn't include zero. The domain of the gradient function also shouldn't include negative one because the gradient is not defined at negative one. Okay, so there is our derivative function, also a piecewise or hybrid function. Okay, so the work today is from a worksheet titled Differentiability, um, and you can make a start on those questions. This brings us to the end of our rates of change and differentiation topic. So understanding what differentiation is and how we calculate derivative for simple um, polynomial and power functions. Um, the next topic, we're going to start to look at applications of derivatives. So we don't introduce any new functions to our differentiation in year 11. We'll, we won't look at derivatives of exponentials, logs, circular functions, etc. Um, but next year that will get added in in year 12. <laughs>